Okay, the program I'm going to show you is called the ETL, and I wrote it for a company I was working for to help us process spreadsheet data that would come in containing prospective customer information, um, and it would come from all over the place, and we had to standardize it and clean it up before we could put it into our customer database so that we could market to them. So here's an example of a spreadsheet. This is just sample data that I generated, um, and it's got, you know, common fields for what you can expect for customer data, the first name, last name, address, all this stuff. But you can see that it's the data is kind of dirty. Some of the things are in uppercase, some of them are all lowercase. Um, some of the data is not good at all. Like this one has a space in, they can't have a space in an email address, things like that. So we need to validate it and standardize it before we can make good use of it, before we put it in our database. So let's close this. And this is the ETL here. And it works in stages. So you just start up here at the top left. And we load our source data. I pick this Excel sheet. It's got 10,000 rows. Designed it to work with fairly large sets of data. There are more than one sheet in this spreadsheet, so or workbook, so I'm going to load the first one. OK. You can see that it got the data here. And you can see kind of what it looks like before we get started. I'm going to select source fields. This is all the data I'm going to be working with, so I can see it. I'm just going to use them all. And now I'm going to configure my target fields. I can see a little better here. And I'm first just going to add all fields over from source to target because what I do is I create a whole new set of fields here so I can rearrange them these obviously were not in the proper order so I'm gonna take uh, email address I want that up then I'm gonna move city above state there now at least I have them in the right order so let's save process now it's going through 10,000 rows right now that's how quickly it finished and now I can review and see how the data came out. Now the data itself hasn't changed, it's just been rearranged. So now my fields are in the right order. First name, last name, email, address, city, state, zip. But I want to do a little more than that. So I'm going to go back to my target fields. And over here in the formula, this is how it figures out what this field will eventually be. So I'm going to take first name, I'm going to click on formula, select this, change the case to proper case for first name. And now we have this formula. If we wanted to test it, we can choose a name here and hit test. And this is how it comes out. So we know that's right. So I'm just going to copy that. We'll use the same formula for last name, also for address in city. For email, I want it to be all lowercase, so we'll change case to lower. Test it out here. Okay. And state, we want to be uppercase. Uppercase. Okay. Now let's take another look. Now this is what our data looks like. It's much better already. We've got proper case for first and last name, lower case for email, proper case for address and city, and upper case for state. So it's already looking much better. We can see it actually did all 10,000 rows here. But let's go a little further and add some validation. Because there are some things in here that we don't want to go through. For example, invalid email addresses, missing names, things like that. The first name I want to be required, and what happens is the formula gets figured out first, then these filters are applied, and a filter can flag a record so that I can check it out later. So we're going to call this required, and the filter type is cannot be null. 
the action that happens when this flag is or filter is flagged is going to just be flag because I want to see it. Hard flag means it cannot be exported. But flag is just going to let me know about it so that I can fix it. Now I get it in here, filters that flag records. Email address, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to add a regular expression filter. I've got regex buddy over here. I'm just going to grab this regular expression that I prepared. And now I'm going to add a filter. Filter type is must match regex. What should happen if this filter fails? We're just going to flag. Paste the pattern in, parse it, it's valid. Okay. Let me check to make sure. Yep, case insensitive. Okay. Oh, let's give it a name. Valid email. Okay. Let's also, well, that'll take care of the null records too if there were any. Save and close. Process again. Because we had the manual editor open, it wants to make sure that we know we're going to overwrite any changes we made in the editor. So we're going to hit yes. It's reprocessing. Checking all those fields. Now when I go to review, I can see that I have some bad data here down at the bottom. It says 625 soft flags, 608 bad rows. So I want to show only rows that had failed validation. And this will let me see what's wrong here. You can see on this first one, this is a bad email address. This is missing a first name. Some of them are missing a first name and have a bad email address. But the point is it tells you what's wrong. And you can keep working on these. You can fix them. You can do all sorts of things. Um, it's kind of like a, a little bit of an enhanced Excel here in this grid. And as soon as it's good, it looks all green like that. But you can see here this failed a flag, or failed a filter, email failed valid email. So that's no good. Once we fix this though, put it in a dot com, it revalidates the row using the same set of filters it started with. And now you can see the row is valid. There weren't any rows filtered out because I didn't set any of those filters to actually remove records. But I could have. If I set this to say remove records with bad email address, then it would actually show up here and it'd be removed from this list. We can also filter out duplicates on any field. This was another big deal. Um, the process that we went through to do this every time we got a list, it was about two hours to two days to do all this stuff because we'd get lists from, from 500 all the way up to 50,000 people. Um, so we'll choose email address because we don't want any duplicates of that field. Now it has found 1,200 duplicates. It shows you what they are and how many duplicates there were. So I'm just going to hit remove from output. It takes a second because it's got to actually physically navigate the, that data grid. And plus when you're recording the screen everything's slow. There. Now they're gone. You go to final output and those are gone from there too. So we hit OK. Now after manual review, I only have 8,700 records left instead of 10,000. So those are those, those duplicates I removed. When you're done, um, I had an option on here to actually create a field map and export it to a database using an XML file format for field maps because um, that was the main point of this for one particular person. They use this every day for their job. Um, but before that, it was just for exporting to files. And since I'm not on their network anymore, I'm just going to export to a file. We'll just keep it in the same folder. You can do Excel, um, tab delimited or comma delimited. We'll just do comma. 
we'll call it comma or final and it has exported it right there. If I want to take a look at it, I can just open it up in Excel here, and there's my data. All cleaned up, all in the right order, and I could even have told it to not include those ones that have bad email addresses, filter them out. So technically I could just have a filtered list here of good good data. Instead it's formatted much better than it was. So that is the end result.